Hello, I'm Chuck Phillip, and welcome to another Southern Stories edition of Fairhope I'm Doing. Uh, this was going to be on the K-1 school. Uh, I was actually kind of surprised to see that this was abandoned, and come to find out it's been abandoned about 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, but I do have somewhat of a connection to this. Uh, back in the mid-80s, uh, I used to drop my stepdaughters at the time off at this. This has been around 1986 or 87. But this was the first high school. Uh, Fair Hope. It was built in 1925, and of course, it was built out of the Clay City brick, and it's been expanded over the years as well. And I could see that, you know, they've been keeping up the grounds, it appears like to the large degree, at least at the front part of it, they have. But I also saw some, some Tyvek wrap up there on the top part of this other gable end, so I'm assuming that they're probably going to refurbish this. And so I'm just kind of guessing as I go along, I'm pretty much trying to do just a, a small inspection on this. I'm also certified to do uh, commercial inspections. And so, you know, they still got a lot of this covered walkway in place, and it does have some storm damage in places, and it's, you know, dirty in a lot of places as well. And I can see this uh, road that went to the side here. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably where the bus is lined up. Like I say, you know, the, the extent of my experience with this was just picking my kids up and dropping them off, and that was about it. So, and I was kind of surprised to see that it had a crawl space of all things, and so anytime I see these crawl spaces, I instantly red flags go up. But uh, as I went through this thing, I realized it looked to me like most of the flooring in this was concrete, so it'll probably fare a lot better as a result of that. Those are the vents down there at the bottom that you're looking at. And you can see up there at the top, under the soffit, where there's some, uh, some of that is missing up there, some broke windows. And I believe that the loose uh, soffit up there is probably due to the hurricanes that's come through and other storms. Uh, of course, the broke windows may be from people throwing rocks at it. And I did see some graffiti around this as well. And the, it gets kind of uh, higher from the ground the further you go back on this. And it slopes down a pretty good degree as well. So I just made my way all around to the back of this, and I was kind of surprised to see uh, that they had a chill water system for the uh, air conditioning system, which is kind of old school. Uh, I believe these run off in hydrous ammonia. And I also kind of gave me a little flashback at a home inspection I did about four years ago. And it was on a residential home. It was built in the mid-60s. And it had a chill water system. I says, wow. You know, imagine that. And plus that three-phase power coming in, too. Well, come to find out, the guy that lived there, uh, he was a, a HVAC tech and an electrician back in the 60s, so he just had uh, three-phase power run to the house. There, There's actually some homes that have three-phase coming into it. And so, anyway, I, I made my way around the back of this. I'm assuming this backfield area is probably the playground. I did notice that the plumbing underneath this was cast iron pipe. And that's most likely the original pipe that was put in here in the 1925. And just know, cast iron plumbing has a real long service life. But what can happen is if, if water's not run through it, uh, it can actually clog up from moisture. It's kind of like if you've ever been in these caves where you see the stalactites hanging from the top of the ceiling. Uh, that's pretty much what can happen with cast iron pipe. And so it probably should be scoped if they plan to still use that. Uh, I remember when I went to plumbing school, I had to learn how to install that. I, I was kind of taken back by that because I would have never imagine ever having to do this because it's such an old school plumbing product. But it's a good thing I learned how to do it because uh, there were some homes I had to plumb with cast iron because uh, they actually preferred that product because the water doesn't make any noise as it goes through it, especially a two-story home. It's it's a pain to install because you have to melt lead and pour oakum. It's, it's, a, it's a pain. But I, I think I would probably keep that cast iron if it's in good shape. All right, I'm moving down a quarter here. You can see there's some graffiti up there. So it has the water fountain. Of course, the water's off. Uh, too bad they didn't put that paint where it was needed on the rusted parts of this awning. But it looks to me like that's all this really needs. It just needs some cleaning up and some painting. And I think that that was done. This thing can come back to life as something else. And I noticed that these classrooms appear to be like partitioned off through corridors and I took a peek into this one here 
and I was kind of surprised to see that uh, they were still writing on the chalkboard in there and still using chalkboards too. And also it kind of uh, planted a seed with me while I was there and I thought about it the whole rest of the day and still do to this moment about all the founding fathers uh, names being written up there. And I'm hoping that, that we as a country will get back to our constitution since that is the one uh, article that protects us from one another. It's not a, a, a political issue at all. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But anyway, you know, I, at least I had these windows where you could see into them. And it looks like some of them were kind of boarded up. And these are the old jealousy windows. So these are probably the, the same ones that were put there uh, who knows how far back. And they crank out. And, you know, they've lasted a long time, but they have no insulation in them. So they probably do need to replace them. And also somewhat of a fire hazard, too. But, you know, I had a good time going through this, and I could see where the students had actually painted some of these doors. And there's some, also some old notices put up there, I guess are the same ones that was there whenever they shut this thing down. I'm assuming this area here is probably where the students probably waited for their bus rides or maybe their carpool home. There's quite a few benches on this other side. And it's kind of shaded too. I noticed there was no lighting in this as well. So I didn't even see any fixtures for that. So I guess at nighttime, it'd probably be pretty dark back here. And I also got to notice in the school bell up there on the wall. So, you know, I guess that the days of that ringing is probably over. It looks like it's pretty rusted out as well. But yeah, guys, if you were a student here at one time, uh, Put in the comments down below what kind of experiences you had here. I'm sure you had some fall festivals. And if you're a teacher, that'd be good to hear from you as well. And I hope you've enjoyed this tour of this building. And hopefully, you know, something to come of this to where they can restore it. Because this is an old building. It's, like I say, 1925. And was also the first Pharaoh Pie School as well. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. And stay tuned in the next one.